All 14 members of the jury, okay, feeling well, healthy. So I read all of the law to you yesterday. It is now, I'm sorry, Saturday. It's 1.33. If you want to start deliberating now, you may do so. You can eat lunch while you deliberate. Or if you want to take a break and eat and then start deliberating again, it's up to you. Uh, whatever you want to do. Um, do you have a preference as to whether or not you want to eat lunch first and start deliberating or have a working lunch? Working, working lunch. Okay. <laughs> the jacket trial jacket is this jacket. It has the indictment in it. It also has a charge in it. It is identical to the charge that you have. You cannot write on the charge or on the indictment. When you record your verdict, you will write your verdict on the jacket. It doesn't make any difference whether it's the front of the jacket. That's the style of the case, State of Tennessee versus Billy Turner, 170581. And it has the charges on the front of the jacket. Count one, first degree murder. Count two, conspiracy to commit first degree murder, count three, criminal attempt, first degree murder. You can write the verdict on the front of the jacket or the back which has no writing on it. Uh, totally up to you. As I told you on Saturday, there are 19 possible verdicts that you can reach in this case. When you start to deliberate, the first thing you do is select one of your members as four person. And when you deliberate in this case, you have to start with count one of the indictment, whether or not Mr. Turner is guilty or not guilty of first degree murder. As I told you on Saturday, it's not a menu. It is not a multiple choice test where you look at the possible choices and say what fits better or what do we think is more closely to what we believe happened. You have to start with defense of first degree murder. And if you find it's guilty of that offense beyond a reasonable doubt and unanimously, your four person will write that verdict on the jacket again. Makes no difference where. If you make that finding, we the jury find the defendant guilty of first degree murder as charged in count one of the indictments. If you unanimously find that he's not guilty of first degree murder or find unanimously that he's not criminally responsible for first degree murder, then and only then can you consider the less included offenses. You start first with second degree murder, make a determination as to whether or not Mr. Turner is guilty of second degree murder or being criminally responsible for second degree murder. If you find him guilty of that included offense, your four person will record that verdict. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of second degree murder as included in count two of the indictment. If you unanimously find that he's not guilty of that, or unanimously have a reasonable doubt, then and only then can you consider other included offenses in the order in which they are listed. If you unanimously find that Mr. Uh, Turner is not guilty of anything in count one of the indictment, your four person will record that verdict. We, the jury, find the defendant not guilty of count one. And you would then proceed to deliberate on count two of the indictment. Does anyone have any questions about how you go about the deliberation process and how you record your verdict? Ladies and gentlemen, all 14 of your names are included in this wooden cylinder. I'm going to spin this cylinder multiple times for the record and we'll reach in here in a few seconds and we'll blindly take out two slips of paper. And those two slips of paper will be the folks that have been randomly discharged from further participation or deliberation on this case. We have been using some form of this for over 200 years in the state of Tennessee, wearing black robes and white wigs. We got rid of the white wigs a long time ago, but we continue to wear the black robes. This is actually my least, least favorite part of the trial because you all have been here since Monday of last week, on March the 4th, and have been telling you that you can't talk to anybody, and at some point, very shortly, two of y'all will be randomly discharged as a juror, and your trial participation will be concluded at this point. And it is a sudden end to a long process.
follow ones, folks have been randomly discharged as alternates on this case. Um, just remain seated. Um, we'll have this trial jacket. He'll bring all the exhibits uh, to the jury room for you also. If you want the gun and uh, other items, bullets, um, shell cases that were recovered, let me know. We'll bring it back to the courtroom. Uh, we do not send guns, even though there's no live ammunition in it. We don't send guns and things like that in the jury room. But if you need to uh, take a look at it or have some questions about it, let me know. We'll bring it back to the courtroom and allow you to do whatever you need with that. But we don't usually send guns to a jury room. It has been disabled. It has a gun lock in it. But it's just not a good practice to send those things back to the jury room because I know some people don't feel comfortable around those kind of things. Remain seated, please, sir. And Miss, if you also remain seated. Um, Deputy Smith um, will lead you to the jury room. Your lunch should be there shortly if it's not already there. You may now retire to, and report to the court the verdict that truth dictates and justice demands. I wish you Godspeed in those deliberations. You may now retire to begin those deliberations. And again, this is the most least favorite part of a trial because it makes you know that you are no longer a part of this process. I want to thank you for your willingness to serve on this case and want to thank you for the eight days that you have given on jury service to Shelby County, the state of Tennessee. I met you on March 4th, uh, 2022, some 17 days ago, and I told you that um, we had 21 pages of documents that I wanted you to fill out and um, not to take a questionnaire unless. You were able to serve on a case that might last somewhere between seven and ten days. It wrapped up as far as the proof and arguments a little bit shorter than that. Um, but you could have given a million reasons so why Judge Coffey got things to do, can't serve in that case, and we would have given you another case. Um, did not know anything about this case, and you've made a great sacrifice. It's an extremely self selfless act. Uh, trial by jury in this country is absolutely the best system in the world. It is far from perfect. It is not ideal, but it's the best system in the world. Without folks like you and making those sacrifices, getting a summons on short notice, it says you have to come to 157 Poplar because Judge Coffey uh, ordered that you appear, uh, filling out those questionnaires coming back on Monday the 14th of March a week ago and setting through seven days of trial, including not having gone home to your family, your friends, your loved ones, your job since uh, Tuesday morning when you reported uh, for opening statements. Without you making the sacrifices that you made, this imperfect, this flawed system would not work. On behalf of the great state of Tennessee and all the people involved in this case, um, Mr. Billy Turner, uh, Mr. John Keith Perry, Ms. Andre Thomas, Mr. Austin Schofield, Mr. Paul Hagerman, uh, Ms. Uh, Deborah Marion, her family, friends of Lorenzo Wright, thank you for the services that you've done, the services that you provided for the state of Tennessee been telling you now since March 4th that you could not talk to anyone about anything, could not read anything, could not listen to anything, could not read or watch any reports. As you notice, there have been cameras here the whole trial. Um, those admonitions have now been lifted. You can talk to anybody that you want to. You don't have to talk to anyone. The media would never put your face, your name anywhere because it is against the law in the state of Tennessee to report jury information by face or by any other information. So that would never be published anywhere. If you choose to talk to the lawyers, you may do so. I would make them available for you to talk to them if you want to. If you tell them just coffee, we don't want to talk to anyone, don't want to talk to the lawyers, they will never try to talk to you or contact you because that is also a crime under Tennessee law for lawyers to discuss cases with jurors unless they get specific um, approval from the court to conduct those conversations. If you decide to talk to them, please respect the privacy of your fellow jurors. Talk to them only about what your impressions are, what your thoughts are. Um, they might even ask you what your verdict might be if you were still on this jury. If you want to have a conversation with the lawyers, you may do so. If you tell them just coffee, I don't want to talk to anyone, they will not attempt to talk to you. Uh, the deputies will get your personal belongings for you out of the jury room. Those cell phones that we have become such a prisoner to <laughs> that we can't live without. And it's amazing because a few years ago, you could have asked me phone numbers and I would probably rattle off 100 or 200 phone numbers. If you ask me my cell phone number, I would probably have to think about that for a moment to tell you what that is. Um, but we'll get those cell phones back to you so you can get back to your ordinary life. 
You don't have to go to work today because you are on the jury today, so you will not have to report to work today. In about two weeks or so, we're going to see a great big check. Let me count real days real quick. 30, 210. Approximately the amount of 221 whole United States dollars. Uh, and that would be uh, for your jury service, a small token of our appreciation for the sacrifices you made. Try not to spend it all in one location or at one time, uh, but you get that check for your jury service in a few days. I want to give you a secure, uh, certificate that would indicate you were impaneled, you were sworn, you did serve on a jury that started on March 14, 2022. In Tennessee, we're not going to send another summons for jury service for at least 10 years in Shelby County. Let me rephrase that. In Shelby County, <clears throat> under Tennessee law, we could send your summons to serve in state court in the next two years, but because of the population of Shelby County, we're not going to purposely send your summons to state court for at least 10 years. If you get a summons before then that says you've been summoned for jury duty, you have the absolute right to serve if you choose to do so, but you're not required to do so. If you get a summons from the United States of America that says you've been summoned for federal jury duty, I have absolutely no control over the president, or over the United States Department of Justice, and if you get a summons from federal court, I cannot do anything about that at all. But in Shelby County, we're not going to send you a summons for at least 10 years. Everything in your jury notebooks that you want to keep, feel free to keep it. Um, anything that you don't keep, Deputy Smith is going to hand me those notebooks in a few minutes, and I will personally shred everything in those notebooks so that no one will ever be able to read any notes that you might have taken. The cover of the notebook has my phone number, has my email address on it. Uh, call me or text me, email me at any time if you have any questions about anything. Uh, if you want to stay and wait for the verdict, you may do so. If you do not want to stay and wait for the verdict, just call me or email me. Say, Just Coffee, can you let me know what happened on this case? And I'll be glad to let you know what the results um, that your fellow jurors reached on this case. Step down to give you a jury certificate and let me know what you have in the jury room and also let me know where you want to go. The game will take you anywhere you want to go in Shelby County today. Let me give you a jury certificate. We'll try to get out, get you out of here because I know you're ready to go. I say absolutely do not want to talk to any lawyers. Uh, so. <laughs> this court will stand in recess pending a verdict from the jury. I don't know whether they want to eat and deliberate at the same time, but we're going to take recess until 2 o'clock. I'm sorry, not 2 o'clock. It's at 3 o'clock p.m. And um, if there's a verdict before then, we'll all gather back at 3 and we'll take that verdict. But other folks that are here, and it's 146, 147, those folks need to take a break and eat also. And so we'll, if there is a verdict before 3, we'll take it at 3. And if there's not a verdict, we'll wait for the jury's verdict. This court is time to recess until 3 o'clock p.m.